So it's Good Friday, and um, in the Christian world, uh, people who believe in Jesus, Good Friday, it, as you may know, is when we remember Jesus' death and what that, what happened and what it means, and then we, it kind of prepares us to be, uh, to celebrate Easter when he rose again, because if Jesus stayed dead, that would really suck. Like, we would all be here, and we actually probably wouldn't be here, and our lives would be completely different if he hadn't risen again. So it's important that he died, but it's also really important that he rose. Um, but today we are almost done with our little uh, time through Matthew. And we are, because it's Good Friday and we're going to remember Jesus' death, we are going to read some of the, the passage um, that talks about his death in Matthew. Um, but before that, I have a question for you guys that I, I really would love you to try to answer. Um, and yeah. My question is, where is God right now? You can throw out whatever comes to mind. Where is God? The hospitals. Hospitals. That's a, that's a great answer. At work, says the chat. That's, that's good. Yep. <laughs> Probably helping, trying to stop this uh, coronavirus with us, trying to get through it with us and not yeah have so hard of a, I mean, even though the coronavirus is really uh, bad, he's trying to help yeah. solve it and not. Yeah, but where, it. where is God? That's my, That might be like what he's doing, but where is he? What place, what location? Is is there a place where God is right now? He could be anywhere, actually. Honestly, yeah, he could be everywhere right now. Yeah, he, Hi, Avery. Um, and just anybody, that much. Anybody else just have that any much thoughts? Seconds. Um, let's keep it. Let's keep it rolling. Keep it short. Um, on these answers, but what? Where is God? Any any other thoughts? Where is God? Some people might say heaven, right? Some people might say everywhere. Um, but I just want us to think about that because, oh, uh, who just joined? Zach. Hi, Zach. Um, so we're just thinking about the question, where is God? And I just kind of want that to be in the back of our mind as we read the story that we're going to read. Because um, it's a weird thing to think about because... We live in, on the earth, and so if I were to say, where is um, the president of France? I don't even know if that's the, or the prime minister of France. Well, probably in their house, wherever their house is, and we can like name a place. Even though I have no idea who that person is, I, I know that there's a place where they are, but God is different. How do we think about where God is? Is he somewhere physical? Some are not physical. Is he in some fourth dimension? I don't know. So it's interesting. But let's just think about that as we read. So we're going to read from Matthew uh, chapter 27. And we're going to read about the death of Jesus. And I want you to really look for the humor in this story, the, the mocking that happens in this story. Um, look for the way that Jesus is made fun of and treated in this story, because it's really, um, because we know the end and we know Jesus, it's a little bit funny in some ways. So I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 27. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to pray. And then we're just going to take a few moments of silence to kind of prepare to hear um, the story. God, open our ears and our eyes and our minds and our hearts to you and your love for us as you died 2,000 some years ago. Open, uh, open us up to receive what you have for us and your love for us today. Thank you. 
All right. Now let's read from Matthew chapter 27 together. After they had nailed him to the cross, the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. They sat around and kept guard as he hung there. There was a sign fastened above Jesus's head announcing the charge against him. It read, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. This is a joke. They're making fun of him because he says he's the king of the Jews. Two revolutionaries, two bad guys per se, were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. The people passing by, because it was on a, on a road, people passing by shouted abuse, shaking their hand, heads in mockery. They said, look at you now. You said you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Well then, if you are the son of God, save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests of the religious people, teachers of the religious law, and the elders also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. So he is the king of Israel, is he? Let him come down from the cross right now and we will believe in him. He trusted God, so let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. Even the revolutionaries who were crucified with him ridiculed him in the same way. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. So it's the middle of the day from 12 to three. It's dark. And at about three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice this phrase which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? So did anybody catch any of the, the kind of humor in all of this? Does anybody, what, is, what do you guys think about all the mocking, the joking, um, the statements that, that the people made to Jesus as he was on the cross. What do you guys think about all that? Any thoughts? They made some pretty valid points, right? I think some of their, the stuff that they said seems like it makes sense. You look at what the religious people said. They said he saved others, but he can't save himself. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? He, he actually raised a man from the dead and he healed sick people and did all these amazing things, but he can't save himself. So the question, they, they even say, if he saved himself, we'd believe. Like they, their hearts would be turned if he were to save himself and show his power. So then the question is, why didn't he save himself? That would have shown them, right? What do you guys think? Why didn't he save himself? Because you want to save other people and not just him. Mm. Yeah, oh, that's good, Hayden. Thank you. Anybody else have any thoughts?
I think what Hayden said is really good. That Hayden said that he didn't save himself because he wanted to save other people. And that's a simple way of saying that he was trying to accomplish something. Like he wanted the, the cross meant something for us and for all of the people of the world and the entire world. And so by staying on the cross and not saving himself, he made the statement that it meant something, that he was there. It's important. Um, so my question, my next question comes from the statement that he makes at the end. It says, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? And when you imagine Jesus suffering like he did, like this whole time, all these people are saying stuff to him. He's hanging from a cross with nails and wood and struggling to breathe. And it's gross and painful. And, and then right before he dies, he says, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? And we can assume that he's talking to father, maybe. Um, and so the question is that I have for you guys is where was God on this day when this was happening? Where was God? Because it seems he seems pretty absent. But what do you guys think? Where was God on this day, the day that Jesus died? Any thoughts? I think he kind of like did it to, for us. Yeah. So, so because he, uh, well, really, we don't really would know where he w was at because, um, he could have been really anywhere, is like we were saying. So, he could have been. At one of his uh, friends or something, houses or whatever, uh, or anywhere. Okay. We like, like, like what I was kind of saying was, I, we really don't know where he could have been. So that's kind of hard for us to like say where he could have been at on this. Yeah. Day. No, I get that. Yeah. But I think we, I think we do have some clues, maybe. Um, it's hard to know for sure, but does anybody think there might be any clues or any, any ideas of where God was, um, on this day? Well, we could have been at church. Um, well, we we're thinking about, we're thinking about where God, God was. Well, yeah, that's what I was saying. That's what, what we really, that, that's what I was trying to say was we really don't know where he could have been on, we couldn't really know where he was at that's why i was trying to say like he could have been at places where yeah i i know i know what you're saying i i am just wanting us to think more about it because i think we do have some ideas to where he might have been so i want you to think just think a little harder and maybe there is something we can come up with about where he he is or was but does anyone anyone have any thoughts any ideas? Any more? Any more about where God was on this day that Jesus died? I think he could have been there watching. Yeah. Hmm. Mm hmm. Totally. Anyone else want to throw in their, their two cents? Where might God have been on this day? Could have been trying to save the world. Yeah, but where? 
That's what. That's what he was doing. But where? Oh, wait, wait, wait. You're good, Hayden. You're good. Don't worry. Does anybody else have any thoughts? Here's one place that God was. One place that God for sure was, was hanging on a couple pieces of wood by a few nails, listening to people mock him and make fun of him and gamble for his clothes, which he no longer was wearing, and suffering incredible pain that's one place where god was god was on the cross because we believe that god that jesus is god and so god experiences everything that jesus experiences because jesus isn't just some guy which for me is a really incredible idea that the creator of the universe became part of the created world that he, he made as a baby and grew up and did a bunch of things and then actually was killed by the people that he created, which is mind blowing to me. Um, and I think we can find a lot of comfort like I we think talked another, about yesterday. Um, in the another, oh, what's that, Hayden? I think another thing. What we, what, oh, when you, when I kept like reading, where was God on this day? Well, he could have been like scared of like how of like the all the stuff that he was that he of the cross and how he was nailed and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, then another thing was like I thought maybe he could have been scared was another one because yeah. that could have been really good for stuff because he knew he he was trying to do his best and not kind of be hanged but he did it for us too though yeah for another one totally no that's really good i uh appreciate you you adding that um i do think you like we talked about yesterday you probably had some some fear involved too um but just for me to remember that not only was this some guy jesus that saved us but it was god feeling the nails and the wood and the pain and listening to the mocking and just like he taught us and we learned we a couple weeks ago during this whole uh, time in the book of matthew is that um, to love our enemies. So he didn't, he didn't say anything back. He didn't strike them down or anything. And he just hung there. So there's a, there's a song, a part of a song that you guys may have heard of before that I um, want us to listen to um, just to kind of reflect on this reality that God as Jesus died at the at the hands of the very people in the world that he created. Really an ironic thing. So listen to a bit of this song with, with me. down my heart through all of my failure and pride on a hill you created the light of the world abandoned in darkness to die and as you speak a hundred billion failures disappear. 
listen to that one more time. God of salvation, chase down my heart through all of my failure and pride. The hill you created, the light of the world, abandoned in darkness to die. Um, for me, this truth has been one of the most powerful things that has drawn me towards Jesus in that my God died and was willing to die and has always been willing to die for us and to suffer uh, as we suffer. And so to, to close today, I just want us to do a little bit uh, of, of a kind of imaginative prayer. And so I'm going to kind of guide us through it. And it's um, a way for us to kind of place ourselves in the scene where Jesus is on the cross. And I don't want you to um, be like freaked out um, by it. Um, but it's a very, I mean, a very real thing that happened that he hung from a cross. Um, and so does anybody have any last questions or comments or um, anything before we do this little prayer time? <clears throat> All right. And just to reiterate uh, something that I've said before, but the reason why I have us do all these unique, different prayer experiences um, is because prayer is not just saying, God, help me do this, or God, help this person do this. It's not just asking God for things. That's one way to pray. Um, but there are a lot of other ways um, that we can pray. And not all of them involve us talking to God. A lot of times prayer is listening, imagining, and resting with God. And that might seem like a harder thing to do because um, it's not concrete. I can't finish praying and think, oh, good, I prayed for these people. But it's something that allows us to connect to God. And it takes a lot of time and practice. And so don't feel like if you get distracted, it's not a failure. It's okay. So just do this with no guilt, no shame, knowing that God loves you. And that this is just an opportunity to um, deepen our own love for, for God. And so I just want you to take a few deep breaths. And in, out, close your eyes. Free yourself from distractions. <coughs> Put yourself there the day that Jesus died. You are in the crowd, a crowd of people who are looking up at this man on a cross. He's been nailed there. He's in pain. You can see it on his face. You hear around you, from behind you, and to your right, and to your left, people's mocking of him. They're essentially bullying him and making fun of him. You see the sign on his cross that says, King of the Jews, and you wonder, maybe that's a joke. You watch as he struggles to get a breath and you, your heart feels the pain with him.
And then you think this is the God of the universe hanging there. And then you realize that you are watching the God of the universe suffering in pain, being crucified. And you don't know whether to feel anger, to be grateful for him, to love him. Are you supposed to do something to stop it? They're killing God. I just want you to think about, picture Jesus on the cross. You're looking up at him. Picture the scene of the people around and just take that in for a few seconds. Really take that in. And then we realize that the sign above his cross, it would be more accurate if it read creator of the world. I wonder how the people would feel if they knew they were creating, they were killing the creator of the world. And then And he cries out, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? And then he takes his last breath. And he's dead. He can't hang on anymore. There's sorrow within you. There's sadness. There's anger. There's mystery. Why, why did this happen? We know that he rises again. You can open your eyes and um, and everything now. Um, we know that he will rise again just a few days after. But I think there is power in us really letting that feeling and image and scene sink in and knowing that it's the God of the universe hanging there. So thank you guys for engaging with that. Does anyone have anything they want to say? Any um, reflections on how that, uh, what was that like for you to pray in that way? Um, anybody have any questions um, before I pray and, and wrap us up? Um, as I was feeling it, I wish we could have just like, done something you know because he like does all does like a whole bunch of stuff for us and what kind of got me to where uh kind of filmed me like that was because when we were uh taking all this um just all right y'all feel free to message me if you have any questions, thoughts? Um, like I've said before, on Sunday at 10 a.m. on the same Zoom account, we're going to do a family, kid, youth uh, watch party of the Easter service. So if you want to be a part of that, just hop on this Zoom account at 10 a.m. with your family, and y'all can be a part of it together. Me and Rocky will be on um, hanging out with you guys. And then Sunday morning, there's, a, there's an email going out uh, today, but Sunday morning at 7 on the Zoom account, Matt is going to do a little short couple-minute uh sunrise greeting from a cool spot um that has a view of millwood so um i'm gonna pray for us and we'll be done and um, hope you guys have a wonderful good friday and get to spend a little bit more time remembering what happened that day all right lord i thank you for each and every one 
of these folks on the call. And I thank you that we get to share together, um, remembering what you did for us and that we get to share too in the hope that we have and that you rose again. God, we just ask you that you would increase our love for you because of this day and what you did on this day 2,000 some years ago. Show up in our lives. Be clear to us, God. We need you. Help us. It's a weird time to be a teenager. In your name, amen.